right. Well, my name is Ann Obarski, and um, you've seen my face. I am a cover girl. I've never been a cover girl before. My face is on the front of the, the show book. So, wait, I'll do one of these. Does it look like me? <laughs> it looks like me. It better look like me. Just don't get real close, right? So, um, I'm just thrilled to be here today and find out who's in the audience. And I've chatted with some of you, but before we get started, I want to kind of get an idea of a little bit about your stores, um, just so that we can kind of make sure that I hit the right points today. And I only have 30 minutes. I never speak for 30 minutes. I'm always much longer, so I need to kind of shorten it up and uh, get to the point. But I first want to know, how many of you have a store in which Halloween is part of the business. It's not 100%. It's just part of the business. Okay, and how many of you, is there anybody in here who has temporary stores where pop-up stores, what have you, that those, okay, okay. So we do have pop-up stores as well. All right, all right. Well, a little bit about me. Um, I've been in business for 28 years and have my own business in speaking, writing, and talking about retail customer service. I'm a customer service strategist, speaking mostly for retail, and that's what I say too. Um, and uh, I really want to talk about being contagious and what makes your business contagious. I've written a book on what makes your business contagious and have a new one coming out on what makes customer service contagious. Because here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to shake the hand next to you, the uh, person next to you, if you know them really well as far as family is concerned, find somebody else. But just shake somebody's hand and say, hi, I'm contagious. Just say, hi, I'm contagious. <laughs> hey, hi, I'm, are, ew, seriously? Ah, da, 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 da. How many of you go, oh my gosh, at this time of the year, somebody says they're contagious, you're thinking, oh, that's like really gross. Okay, or they've been sick and not really feeling very good. So it makes you kind of crazy when people say that. But don't we all want to make our businesses contagious? We want to make it spread and we want to make sure that other people talk about what we have and to get them to come back to us. I was sitting in my hotel room last night and I was thinking about the word experience because I believe in any kind of retail business, I don't care where you live, I don't care what part of the world you live in, everybody likes to have an experience. And so let's get started on uh, a couple of things. Boy, that's a growth we need to have taken care of there. <laughs> Jeez, I better see the doctor about that. Yikes. Um, Anyway, um, those are all of your friends up there. Yeah, they are some friends. Come on in. 80% of people say that customer experience is an area of differentiation. If I come into your store and I have a really good experience, there's a real good chance that I'm going to go tell somebody else. Now, if I asked you today from the very beginning of the day to right now, was there something that you saw? Was there something that you heard? Was there something that you touched? Was there something that you smelled that you would like to tell somebody else about? What are those things that I mentioned? What are those called? They're called your senses. So I want you to think about your business. The current business you have, no matter what it is, whether it, what it is in the party industry, and I want you to ask yourself, when my customer walks in, how much of their senses are affected? In the US here, we have a great store called Costco. Anybody have a Costco in your area? If not, you might have a Sam's Club in your area. If you've got a local grocery store, the grocery stores are picking up on the same things that Sam's Club and the rest of them do, am I right? You can go into some of these stores and pretty much eat your way through the store. And lots of people say, oh my gosh, you have to go to Costco. Costco on Monday nights has beer night. How many of you have ever gone to the beer night at Costco's on Monday night? That's a scary thing. Is that not like way too cool? Now we know who drinks beer in here. Now they do have a... Absolutely, and you get fabulous recipes and food. You start out with 
two glasses. My husband and I start out with two glasses in Costco. I don't drink beer. I said, Jerry, I will eat for you. So we go to stations. When you go into Costco, you start out with the first station, which is like in the, the fruit area or whatever, and you start out with free beer. Or it, well, it's $5 a glass. So you get your beer, and then you get an hors d'oeuvre. And then you go into the meat area, and they keep filling up his glass, and I'm eating. And he's filling up two glasses until we get around to the dessert area, and he's like pie-eyed. We're in a grocery store for crying out loud. And he says, Ann, you're going to have to drive home. I'm thinking, we're in a grocery store. And he said, too much beer. Of course, I've had too much food. But it was a fun experience. And they do wine night. I thought, I don't drink wine either. Let me think. Let's come back for wine night. Now, does Costco, uh, I'm sorry, I messed up on the, the place. It's not Costco doesn't do the beer night. It's Whole Foods. I'm sorry, I made a mistake on that one. Costco doesn't do that. Costco just puts out free stuff and you just eat yourself silly as you're going around the store. But Whole Foods is the one that does the free beer or the beer night. But it's an experience. Whatever it is that can be an experience that brings people back to your store. I, like most speakers, are going to tell you that I believe that there's three things that we can work on to create that experience. Um, how many of you were in Peter? Leeches this morning, his talking about social media. How many of you say, I have time to do that? <laughs> Most of us say, I don't have time, but you don't have time not to. Because it is definitely part of our businesses anymore, no matter what you're in. And part of doing social media right is the same as running the rest of your business. It's having a committed consistency where you say to yourself, I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be consistent, and I'm going to do this all the time. One of the areas that I worry about when it is Halloween or even any kind of a holiday type of merchandise, that sometimes we get excited about buying it, we get excited about getting it into the store, but we may not take the commitment and be as consistent on making it look fabulous all the time and making it be an experience for the customer all the time. Not just for the first day, not just for the kickoff, but making sure that there is a consistent experience. Um, my f the three that I really wanted to talk about is being service focused. Everything today is service focused. Um, and everything that you do reminds the customer whether or not you are good and whether or not you follow through on what you believe in. This holiday season in the US, there were two companies that really got hurt by not being consistent and not following through on what they believed in. One of them was Target, and the other one happened to be Best Buy. In essence, what happened was they did not have what the customer ordered online. And they made a mistake on not being consistent and not following through with their strategy. So I believe that we need to follow through with our people to create that good customer service. I've got up here what I call superheroes. These little guys um, that are either you select your superheroes and train your superheroes. Um, right before Halloween and before I agreed to come here and do this presentation, I made a decision in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from, that I was going to do a little, what we call, mystery shop. How many of you are aware of what a mystery shop is? For those of you who don't know what a mystery shop is, basically you go into the store pretending that you are a customer and you evaluate that store. And I was totally unimpressed, unexcited about the experience that I had in some at, at what we call the pop-up Halloween stores. Because I said, oh, with just a little bit of a fix, you could go from good to great, thank you very much, I think there's a book written like that, but you could really be fabulous. If you also first started at looking at your people and hiring people, are you hiring the right people to work for you, especially at this time of year, and are you training them? No matter what business you are in, this is an area that always seems to be one of the biggest areas of 
Um, a challenge for retailers is finding those right people, but also training those right people. And I'm saying that what are your non-negotiables? I walked into a couple of stores where I was greeted and hounded and have you ever had this happen where they kind of follow you everywhere and you're like, I'm, you want to turn around and go, I am not stealing. I am not stealing. Don't look at me like that. That's not something I was doing. In other stores, I'm made to feel like I'm invisible. Not my size. I would like to be made to feel invisible, but that isn't going to happen. And there have been those times, have you not had it happen, where you feel invisible. So if you want me to come back, one of the things that we need to do is focus on the people. Let me go back to one other thing as I was talking about sitting in my hotel room and, and thinking about the word experience. I'm going to now physically go and change the word because most of us do it on, on our text messaging. We go, oh, well, I don't want to write that whole word. So we're, you know, doing those funny little things to it. Well, this one, and if you don't leave with anything else and you go out of this, this little area, think about the word experience as an X. So it's experience, expect, okay? And that X, to me, means a multiplier. When you were in kid in school, it was two times three. You had that X in the center. I believe our goal, no matter what it is, no matter whether if you've only got Halloween for one time of the year or it's part, it goes throughout the whole year, how often can you get me to come back? How many times can we multiply it for me to come back as a customer? And when I come back, and because you've got a contagious business and I tell everybody else, how many people can I bring with me and in essence increase your business? Because that experience of me coming in one time should not only happen one time. When I talked about, I apologize, Whole Foods, I go back to Whole Foods. I continue to go back to Whole Foods because the experience is always good. The people are always great. The merchandise is always top level. And there's a level of expectation. So when we start talking about your people, what are you doing to train them and maintain that level of good retail customer service for those customers that are coming in all the time? I was chased around one of the Halloween stores going, are you finding everything okay? Are you okay? Are you finding everything? Is there any questions I can answer? And I just wanted to like smack them, you know? Because like, if I need you, I'll come get you. But when I also got to the register, which should be an area for add-on sales, it was not, did you get, did you know we had this? Oh, I see that you're buying this. Did you know that this could go with it? The additional things that you could purchase. I believe most people who are walking into your store, and especially if you have a party store, there are things in there that they have no clue you have. One of my biggest complaints for a lot of the party stores is that the walls are like 30 feet tall and you make these great big long corridors with merchandising from the ceiling to the floor, and it's sometimes overwhelming. And when it becomes overwhelming, a lot of people make the decision, no, I'm not going to buy. So let's take a look at this one which says, so your Halloween business through your woman's eyes, you know what, just get, get Halloween out of there. Take a look at your business. Forget about what other kind of business it is. Take a look at your business through a woman's eyes. Let me ask you a question. You tell me, what percentage of your current customer base are female? Give me a number. Oh, we have 95 over here, 75, 85, 80, 60, 90. Okay, if, if I was to say over 70%, would we be okay? I like to say over 80% because that's very close to what the percentage numbers say. If 80% of your business are women, don't you think you should look at your business through a woman's eyes? All right, so there's some specific things that we'd want to look at. Looking at the top 10 classifications, if I was to ask you right now, hopefully you've got some kind of a buying plan and you know what your top 10 classifications are. Out of those ten, top 10 classifications that you're buying with, how are those vendors treating you? How is your, your um, delivery service? How's your pricing and gross margin? How are the, is that merchandise uh, turning for you? And is it something that your female customer is saying, 
gosh, that is the best stuff. I love it. That is wonderful. I keep coming back because you're the only one that has it. So look at your top 10 classifications and also look how you're merchandising those top 10 classifications. The next one is merchandising on purpose, not just to stock it. How many of us go, well, I don't have time to do this, and the box came out. What do you want me to do with it? I don't know. Put it somewhere. Right? And we don't think about where is the purpose. If I'm out here buying, where am I going to put it when I get back to the store? And how is it going to have that wonderful attraction for the female customer, but for any customer who's walking into the store? So merchandising on purpose. And my third one is stop the temporary mentality. And I'm not meaning that for those of you who just have, who have a temporary store. I guess I'm looking at the word temporary as, oh, well, it, that's just this time of the year, and then we put it away, or what's left over gets put in the very back row, and if it gets put in the very back row of the store, it's just kind of haphazard. Well, the female customer is so used to being able to find sales. She's so used to shopping in a whole lot of very nice-looking stores, and whether it happens to be a big-box store or a small store or a boutique, she rates every single one of them. And in some cases, how the store looks and how it's merchandised and the ease of shopping either brings her in and has her bring her friends or she goes out the door. So taking a look at uh, your products and how that handles customer service. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking about merchandising and display and how easy it is when you look around here looking for signage, looking for lighting, looking for how the merchandise is tightly merchandised so you look like you're in stock more than you're out of stock. Service focus through promotion. So we have people selling it. Are they your wonderful um, superheroes? Put some capes on them and, and I'll guarantee you they would be your superhero you wouldn't want to be without. The second one is your customer service through the amount of products that you have and how well you have merchandised them. And the last one is through promotion. I didn't realize Peter was going to be talking about this this morning, and I'm going to piggyback on it because if you're heading, hitting any of the business sessions here, you're going to see a common theme, a common theme through everything now which has to do with social media. And there is a term out there now called likeonomics. He talked um, a little bit this morning, and, and those of you who have Facebook pages and so forth, you know that if you read something, there's the little buttons underneath that say either like or share. That's a big deal because that's the contagiousness. That's having somebody say, I like what you do. I want to share it. I want to tell everybody that I know. So um, looking at your chart, your schedule, what are you going to do letting people know about the new things that you're bringing in. If you are here and buying party supplies, if you have a fan page, can you just go over here on any of the booths, take a picture of something, upload it to Facebook and say, I am so excited that we're going to be bringing this into our store. I can't wait to get back from the show in Houston so you can see it. Although I think that's probably more than 140 characters, but you just told me now that we can do more than 140 characters. So I'm creating that excitement. I have a, a store that I do business with that when they go to market, they send a picture and they say, for the first 20 people who respond to this, I'll give you a $20 gift certificate. Should we buy this or should we not? I thought, man, when I was a buyer of Macy's, I would have loved if somebody would have said, here, you've got a, a chance to talk right to your customer and find out if they want this or not. So using Facebook is huge in generating that relationship, like economics, and an expectation. Remember I said, you've got the expectation that I'm going to have an experience if I come into your store. You're setting the stage. Even if you start now, wow, I bet you wish it was September because this is the merchandise we're buying to, to bring in for this Halloween. You're setting the stage and you're doing a great job at promoting and you're starting before anybody else does. And it doesn't have to be all the time, but if you're using Facebook, the idea with Facebook, and I said before, consistency, have a strategy, have a schedule, and have consistency so that you can say, 
two times a week, one time a week. I'm going to post this and I'm going to give great information. So what are you going to do when you go back as far as letting people know what the cool things that you're going to be doing are when it comes to Halloween as well as what you're doing through promotion. I know it's Party City. I couldn't find a better one because quite frankly there weren't any real good ones in Columbus, Ohio. So um, I, I pulled up this one. When Peter talked about this morning saying, do you have someone that works for you that you could have post to uh, Facebook? Be very cautious and I like his, his, his idea, just make sure that those people who post to Facebook, that you let them know, we have, a stra we have a strategy, we have a brand, and when you post anything, I want to either approve it first, or these are the three criteria that it needs to have. It needs to um, you know, have a little education factor, it has to have a little information factor, um, you know, and it could even have fun factor, but be very careful because the internet is not in pencil, it is in ink. And it's your brand if you give somebody else that job to do. So to me, I think it's important to have a schedule and get that information going out. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this part of it because if you don't come tomorrow, you won't hear me say this. I believe event planning is the key to getting customers back into your store. Small events, many times throughout the year, well, well scheduled, a good strategy, and a good template that you continue to do. I saw, and I just came up with this because I walked the show, could you not have somebody that comes in that does the cakes over here if you've got a party store and said, you know, we're going to have a cake contest and we have three bakeries that are going to come in and do that. Could you not have somebody come in and do a face painting lesson, if you will, like they're doing up front, so that a mom, if the females or the people who are shopping in your store are going to come in with their kids or they want to go to a party and say, I really don't have a lot of money to spend on a, on a costume, but man, if I could do some cool face painting, that would be neat. What is it that you can do to bring them back in the store? The beer night at Whole Foods brings me back in. Costco's food tastings bring me back in. A lawn and garden center around the corner from me does wine and cheese tasting. Look around your neighborhoods and see what events they are doing. The key to improving sales is to get me back, remember, experience a number of times so I spend more money and I haul people along with me saying, you've got to see what I see, you have to hear it, you have to feel it, you have to smell it, you won't believe it. You have to be with me. That's the idea of being contagious and contagious in your customer service. Um, I'm, I am almost done. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions on anything that you want to talk about as far as retail is concerned. But make sure that when you leave here, you think about the fact that your people, your products, and your promotions are the three things that are creating that excitement through all five senses, I believe, to create that experience where people go, I cannot believe this. I've got to bring somebody here to see this. So that's my presentation. Yes? You said earlier, you said there are three non-negotiables. Oh, make the non-negotiables. Make non-negotiables. OK. Um, the point was we were talking when she said, um, I made a comment about when you start with your employees and you say, these are the non-negotiables. OK, so the non-negotiables are almost, uh, if you've got a um, uh, job description, or an employee handbook. There should be things in that employee handbook, and let me stop there and say, an employee handbook can be one piece of paper. It does not have to be bound. It's one piece of paper. But that employee handbook said, these are the things that I believe are our vision statement and mission statement for my business. We will always greet customer either visually or verbally or by a body language. We will make sure that we always acknowledge them when they leave of saying thank you and, and I can't wait to see you the next time, that whatever those non-negotiables are. But those are things that you're saying for me and my business, this is what I expect out of my employees. And 
And I preface that by saying, when you do that, don't make them parrots. You know, I, how many of us love this? When you go into a store, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Or did you find everything okay? And they say the same things over and over. I'm not a parrot. I don't want to be around a parrot. Let's build relationships. That's the whole key of social media. Social media between Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, all of those things are about building relationships, letting me figure out who you are by not even meeting you face to face. And when I do meet you face, by face, face to face, I know something about you. So to me, that those are the non-negotiables of where you say, everyone I hire, this is what you're going to do. Let me give you an example real quick. When I was in the one Halloween store, uh, and this is fine to have your sales associates dressed in costume, but I could not see her face because she had one of those, those full screened mask things. And I was kind of like, I don't know whether she was like looking at me or I, 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 mean, I didn't know where to look. You know, and, and I'm handing her my credit card and I just felt, excuse the pun, it was a little spooky. Okay? So I was like, uh, all right. So I kind of would say, I don't care if you wear a costume, and especially the last month before Halloween, but no face mask. You know, because to me that just was a turnoff. All right. So those would be those would be kind of like the non-negotiables that I would think. And it, again, if, how many of you have just by you could just do one of these. Have somebody working for you right now that you said, gosh, they are so wonderful. If I could clone them, I would just clone them and I'd get rid of everybody else. Does anybody at least have? There you go. Figure out what it is that makes that, that person that you would like to clone so wonderful. And that's kind of like your basis for your expectation for the other people who work for you. If that person is the person, always there, always smiling, always excited to be at work, always great with customers. What can the other people learn from them? Other questions? No more questions? It is 4.30. It's time for you to leave. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, in it, and maybe we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks so much.